So we're now um, comfortable enough, hopefully, with arrays and for loops to start deleting ships and bullets as they hit each other. We just need to cover the last bit, which is the actual collision detection. Um, there's also a bit of tidying up I want to do because this code's all over the place. Uh, for example, I don't really want the turret to be in charge of its bullets for for, um, for uh, ease of use later on. So I'm going to move this around a little bit. Let's just have a think before we do. Uh, so when we fire, we're putting bullets into a bullet array that's inside the turret. And I don't really want to do that. I yeah. I want them in the main game, so I'm going to cut this bullets array. I'm just trying to think of a way to do it without confusing you. I'm going to cut that out, and that's going to live in the document class for now. So just under where we make the ships array, we're also going to make the bullets array. And the turret needs some extra cleaning up. So it no longer needs to initialize bullets. Let's get rid. Okay, and it no longer needs to add this bullet to bullets, it needs to add it to the parent object version of bullets. Now this could kick up a fuss, so um, <coughs> we'll deal with that in a second. Let's just check that it actually works. If I save that, test the file, hopefully it works. Access of undefined property bullets. Right, so it's not liking this parent. So we need to tell it what this is, really, because um, it's not expecting the property of bullets to exist in a movie clip, which is a little bit odd, but um, you'd think it would just make it anyway. But never mind, we're going to cast it. This is known as, ca as casting when you tell a specific property to be something. So we're telling... We're, well, we're telling the turret here to treat our parent, our parent object, as a movie clip. So what it will do is look inside this now what's treated as a movie clip for a property called bullets. And if we test it, it's okay with that. We're getting errors now when we fire the bullets, which is probably fair enough because we've moved a lot of stuff around. Um, let's have a think. Turret fire. Still not liking it. Um, hmm. Still doesn't like it. Why not save the document class? I oh, never, never, error. Uh, never made the array in the constructor of the the game. So let's do that now. Let's do bullets equals new array. Sorry for the messy start, but as I always say, it's good to see the problems. Expected a semicolon. Mew! We've got a Pokemon array. And there we go, that seems to be working. Right, so we finally got there in the end. We've now got our ships and our bullets in the same location, which makes them much easier to use. And we're going to jump to the for loop that we finished with in the last video. And we're now going to use another for loop inside this for loop to check the bullets against the ships. So we're going to add a new for loop to go through all the bullets. So same process, we set up a for loop, I'm just going to give us some room. For, and uh, we need a variable here, let's do var b count for bullet count equals zero. b count needs to be less than bullets dot length. b count plus plus. Okay, so we've got another for loop there, and in here we need to check to see if the bullet is touching the ship. So we're going to do the collision check here. So we need an if, and then we're going to make use of a new function called hit test object. So we need to type the first object, which, which is ships square bracket count dot, and then the function hit test object. Open brackets and put the other object in, which in this case is bullets, square bracket, b count. Open the if there. Oh, Mr. Bracket. Another little useful hint there. If you open up an if, 
and the bracket defaults to the wrong sort of indentation, it means you've got a bracket missing somewhere normally. So I'm missing a bracket here because I opened two brackets. I opened the if and I opened the, the uh, hit test object function and I never closed them both, I only closed one. So that indented too far. Um, if we get here it means we've hit So if we get here, it means there's a collision. So let's trace that out. We'll trace the word hit. Save that, give it a test, cross your fingers and fire like crazy. I should really increase the speed of firing, but we are getting hit traced out a few times, so that's okay. Um, let's just fire a bit faster in the turret, then we'll change the max cooldown. We'll reduce it to 10, save that. Should be able to fire a bit quicker. Pow, pow, pow. There we go. And again, we can see that we are hitting. Um, <coughs> yeah, so this is working. We can get rid of that. And we need to get rid of both of these objects now. So let's just straight away we'll remove them and see what errors that kicks up. So if we remove child uh, ships count, so this will give us errors. And we'll remove child bullets b count. Give that a go, and uh, let's hit something. Right, so we're getting errors now, and that's because we're never removing the objects from the lists that they're in. So this bullet, it's still being processed, and as is the ship, because here we're we're counting through all the ships every time and trying to update them which in itself isn't too much of an issue, but then if we're checking for any kind of display reference, it doesn't exist because we've removed it. And that's probably most obvious in the bullet class here, because when the bullet's travelled far enough, we try to remove it from the stage, remove it from its parent, which doesn't exist if a bullet's hit the ship. The bullet's already been removed from the stage, so this is totally redundant. Hopefully that makes sense. So what we need to do is um, remove them both from the lists as well. So let's splice them out. And we'll do it in the wrong order first, just to show you another potential problem. So I'm going to, before I remove the, the ship from the stage, I'm going to remove it from the list. So we'll do ships.splice to cut something out. Use the current index, which is count, and we'll take one away from it. Do the same with the bullets, why not? So bullets dot splice b count comma one save that test it and fire some stuff and you can see now that when we hit a ship they're stopping and a different ship getting deleted at best and at worst we're getting an error that's because we're deleting the ship here and then we're trying to remove the same ship from the stage by using its index. Now once it's been removed from the list, that index no longer references that ship. So we've got our order wrong here. It's actually removing the ship one higher from it in the array. So we need to move this line to be below the removed child. Now that's probably fairly obvious to you, but it's just good to see that order does matter. And with the bullet we'll uh, remove it from the list after we've removed it from the stage. Probably still going to get some errors here, but at least the right ones have been deleted. Now I think the only remaining error is that the bullet is still processing its event listener. Um, this one, so it's still trying to remove itself when it's travelled too far, even though we've already cut it from the list here and removed it from the stage. And we can work around that by treating the bullets in the same way as we do these these ships. So the ships are no longer responsible for updating themselves. And we can do that to the bullet as well. So instead of having this bullet update every frame as it's doing here, we'll delete the event listener so it's not going to use that function anymore and we'll update it manually in the document class. So get rid of that, get rid of that just so it's set out the same as the ship here, if we zoom to the ship's update. We commented out the event listener and we removed the e colon event from the update function. 
and we've done exactly the same in the ship, uh, the bullet. So I'm going to save that, and we need to loop through the bullets to make them all update before we do all the the hit test stuff. So we'll have this exact for loop. We'll just copy it, and just before we loop through all the ships, we'll first loop through all the bullets on their own. Not the most efficient way of doing things, but um, it's unavoidable at the moment. So we'll do bullets v count dot update Oop. dot update. So that's going to force the bullet to update. Put a comment there as well. Update the bullets. Okay, uh, let's just have a think. Now we're probably going to get a warning now because we're using the same variable twice. That's okay. Yeah, so we got a warning. That bullet's not going to move because it's no longer being updated on its own. Oh, I just crashed everything. Let's have a look. What have we done? Bullet update and game loop. Doesn't like it. I think. What's going on? What's going on? Um, <laughs> the joy of working with out a real plan. Let's see. So it's not going to like the duplicate variable, so we'll get rid of the word var there to counter that warning. Let's save that and run it. And it didn't like it when I shot something. Right, that bullet travelled too far and it didn't like it. So let's have a look. It's this bit now that it's not enjoying. No. Oh. Because that event listener doesn't exist, so it's not there to remove. Don't. And also, this part is going to remove it from the world, but not the list still. Uh, let's just test it. Shoot. Let's fire it. Right, there we go. We've got the same error again. And that's because of this. So, how can we combat that? And there's loads of ways to do it using a function that returns a value, but we haven't got that far, so let's try and worm our way around it for now. Uh, we could just simply put uh, I know. We'll say in the document class when we update the bullets, after we've updated them we'll say if bullets b count dot parent equals equals null. So if it no longer has a parent, which means it's removed itself from the screen, we splice it out of the array. So we'll do bullets uh, b count. No, not bullets. Don't be <laughs> bullets. Dot splice b count comma one. And again, we're going to get errors. So we're really building up the errors, but it might take me a while to get this error. I know what I'm trying to get. Basically, we're cutting a bullet out of the array and then carrying on um, without adjusting this B count variable, which means we could be accessing a bullet that we don't really mean to get to and causing errors further down the line. So really, the most efficient way would be to count backwards through this array instead of from zero. Or, what we could do is, after we've deleted the, the object, we can reduce this counter variable by 1 to match. So, we've reduced the... Sorry, we've cut something out of the array, we then need to reduce the counter by 1 to compensate for that. Hopefully that all works. I'm just going to delete that bullet off the main FLA, because it's annoying me. Get rid of him. Test that. We should be able to kill stuff. That's all working okay, we're not getting any errors. It's not the most efficient code in the world just yet, but that's because we haven't really covered a lot of the, th the uh, things we need. Cool. That was long-winded. How many bugs did we have in that tutorial? Uh, oh well, it's the nature of development. You're going to fall into problems. Might as well have them in here. Anyone who does perfect tutorials is a big liar. I'll see you in the next one where we start to neaten things up.